Good afternoon and welcome to the future of global neurology. This is our global village today. 83% of the world's population lives in low and middle income countries, also known as developing countries. 50% of the world's population lives in Asia. Africa is the fastest growing region of the world. The United States represents only 5% of the world's population. We live in an unequal world with higher burdens of disease and lower resources to treat those diseases in developing countries. For example, there are more than 2,000 physicians for every 1 million people in the Americas, less than 600 physicians per 1 million people in Southeast Asia, and fewer than 300 physicians per 1 million people in Africa. The disparity is even more extreme for the number of neurologists. There are 50 neurologists for every 1 million people in the United States, less than six neurologists for every 1 million people in India, and less than 0.5 neurologists per 1 million people in Africa. There are massive gaps in the treatment of neurological diseases. At the National Hospital of Uganda, one of the poorest countries of the world, there is one CT scanner for 3,000 patients, no MRI scanner. We have more than, we now have a dozen disease modifying therapies for multiple sclerosis in the United States. In many developing countries, none of these treatments are available or affordable. So what can we do as individual neurologists to help narrow the global neurology treatment gap? My personal approach is simple, TLC, T for teaching, L for learning, and C for caring. I have been a neurologist for 25 years and I love what I do especially teaching neurology to students, interns, and residents. There are many new venues for teaching, including online classes, virtual classrooms, teleneurology. But as we all know, the most impactful teaching is at the patient's bedside. I spend two months a year as a volunteer attending physician at the National Hospital of Uganda. I see every patient every day, and it takes us eight to 10 hours to round on our 30 to 40 inpatients. The photo on the right I took at the National Hospital of India on neurology ward rounds. Neurologists in India are arguably the most experienced neurologists in the world, given the volume and the complexity of patients they treat every day. I have learned more neurology in the last six years working in Uganda, India, and China than I have learned in 20 years practicing in the United States. But all the teaching and all the learning are only meaningful if they lead to improvements in the care of our patients. In the photo on the left, I'm holding a 20-year-old woman in Uganda who came to the hospital with AIDS and tuberculous meningitis. Fortunately, she arrived early enough to respond to anti-TB medications and made a very good recovery. She's one of the lucky ones. In the photo on the left is my good friend and colleague, Jay Bott from NYU. He is examining a 45-year-old school teacher who presented with bilateral six nerve palsies and ataxia. His CAT scan showed a large intracranial mass consistent with an astrocytoma. We referred him to the neurosurgeons and radio radiation oncologists for further management. In the photo on the left here, I'm examining a 60-year-old woman in the emergency room in Beijing. She presented with an acute ischemic stroke, but even though she was within the time window for TPA, she was not given TPA because she could not afford the 800 US dollars for the medication. But the reality is what developing countries need is not more TPA. 
What they need is affordable and accessible primary health care for stroke prevention. Four years ago, I started a nonprofit organization called the Alliance for Stroke Awareness and Prevention Project, also known as ASAP. ASAP supports community-based project sites in Uganda and India that provide free screening and counseling for high blood pressure, the leading cause of stroke globally. ASAP partners with community-based organizations like Rotary International and the Impact India Foundation, as well as the Ministry of Health of Uganda to provide free high blood pressure screening and counseling throughout Uganda and India. Individuals requiring treatment, we refer them to local government or private clinics. Since 2012, I'm proud to say that ASAP has provided more than 80,000 free screenings for high blood pressure. This is our global village in 34 years. The population of Africa will double from 1 billion to 2 billion. The population of South and Southeast Asia will increase 30%. Our village is aging. The number of people 60 and over will double by 2050. So unless more concrete actions are taken, by governments and institutions and international organizations, the global neurology treatment gap will continue to widen. Okay. I believe there are four courses of action that need to be scaled up. Number one, we need to create more opportunities for postgraduate training in neurology for physicians in developing countries. Number two, we need to provide financial, personal, and professional support to those neurologists to prevent migration and brain drain. Number three, we need to engage and incentivize primary care providers and community health workers to diagnose and treat common neurological conditions like epilepsy and migraine. And number four, we need to support and develop international collaborations for research, teaching, and clinical care. If you're looking to get involved in global neurology, I encourage you to come to the Global Health Section meeting on Tuesday morning from 8 to 9 a.m., where you can meet many people within the academy who are involved in global health. So thank you, and enjoy the rest of your time in Vancouver.